Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. BAM weather meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long range forecast update, guys. I hope you all are doing well this morning. At today's update, we're going to talk about the latest on frost potential over the next couple of days. Areas that will continue to run much drier than normal over the next few weeks, and then a potential uptick in hurricane and tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic the back half of this month. And then towards the end, uh, stay tuned because we are going to have an update on signals we're seeing into the winter season. It'll be here before you know it. And keep an eye out, keeping an eye on some key trends in the North Pacific that I think could have a big impact on the upcoming winter. Let's start first with just the next couple of weeks. And you can see here colder than normal temperatures continue to be the story over the next seven days, much below normal temperatures across the Great Lakes, the Midwest, uh, but really much of the central and eastern part of the country, a good bit cooler than normal over the next week or so and that continues to suppress moisture especially if you're out in the northwest plains canadian prairies continuing to run drier than normal messier rainfall chances down across the midwest and the ohio valley into the central plains we'll have more on that here in a moment in terms of the week two time frame guys data has continued to run too warm if you subscribe to our energy reports uh, you'll see that the data in terms of their cdd forecast their cooling demand forecast has been consistently uh, several points if not 10 plus points too high in that week two time frame i think that continues to be an issue with today's forecast in fact i think all the data too warm right now Will it be as cold as the next seven days? No, I'm not anticipating that. And I do think uh, between our 9th and 11th and our 15th and 17th storm systems, I think that there can be a warm up, there can be a moderation, but uh, I think that data right now, probably too quick to warm things up, too aggressive with the warm up, not seeing the cold front at the end of the time frame. So watch out for more colder trends, especially for the Ohio Valley and parts of the Midwest. Regardless, I think the orientation of the temperature pattern heading into that week two time frame not favorable for moisture across the eastern ag belt, the eastern part of the country. I do think increased precipitation threats across the northwestern plains on the table. Part of that is because we have some cooler air moving into the desert southwest will allow for a little bit more of a favorable flow from the west coast into the northwestern plains. So more moisture opportunities in there, but continuing to run drier across the eastern parts of the Ag Belt and the eastern United States. Let's talk about those frost risks. Here's the latest forecast as we work into Thursday morning. Still would not be shocked if some outlying areas got even a little bit colder, but really anywhere through here, guys, you can kind of see the potential to get down into the 30s. And with that, would not be shocked to see some spots get down to the, you know, the 36, 37 degree level, get frost potential. Obviously, the further north that you go, the higher the chance is going to be. If we take a look at the GFS, it continues to run more aggressive. I still think that there's merit to this idea, just given the fact that data has been underdone with these overnight lows over the past couple of weeks. This would highlight a more widespread area in here for the potential, again, in those low-lying outlying areas for a frost as we work into tomorrow morning. You could certainly see here, if you're in the city, uh, not going to have a problem with that, but it's the outskirts, it's away from the city where I do think that there can be some spots that get down to the 35, 36 degree mark or even cooler across northern parts of Minnesota. Still have more threats though to watch as we work into your weekend. Here's a look at Saturday. You can see it's mainly across the central and western parts of the Dakotas. Uh, frost potential in here I do believe on Saturday morning if I had to circle an area kind of in here. And then as we work into your Sunday morning guys you can see another threat here in the cards. If I had to highlight an area it would be through this region in here but don't be shocked even further down to the south this is an area where data is trying to get a little bit colder there could be more isolated or more patchy pockets of some frost even later this weekend a little bit further down to the south of course stay tuned to your local forecast videos for more detailed information in the clarity platform and of course your day-by-day -day forecast there taking a look at precipitation with these fronts moving through we just have 
pesky rounds of light rain. Today, probably the best rainfall potential for the Ohio Valley. Uh, you can see here maybe some heavier amounts down into parts of southern Ohio and into Kentucky, certainly areas that need some of this rain. But you click around here and you can just see it's messy in nature. Some spots getting half an inch, maybe up to three quarters of an inch, but generally, you know, you're, you're a couple tenths of an inch to maybe a half an inch of rain over the next seven days. But most areas will get rain. It's not going to be necessarily bone dry anywhere outside of maybe the far northwestern plains. And I think as a result, you know, if we look at the next four or five days or so, not really going to have much in the way of dry windows. Not more than a day or two at a time, I think, in terms of the next five days, uh, with multiple rounds of scattered showers and storms possible with these cold fronts and the reinforcing cold fronts. So if you're looking to get field work done, uh, looking to dry out hay or whatever it may be for a uh, two, three, four day stretch, I don't think the next five days is probably the period to do that. More dry time possible, though, as we work into next week. If we take a look at the forecast, this is uh, out through the five-day forecast, out through next Thursday, you can see uh, as we work, especially beyond Sunday, should be some drier time. Once again, especially if you're in the eastern Ag Belt. Most of the Ag Belt drier than normal, but this area in particular here should be a solid amount of dry time as we work throughout much of next week. And, and really that lingers all the way over into the end of the week two time frame out through the 16th of the month. The planes start to get a little bit more active. We touched on that earlier. Uh, if you're looking for more persistent, more widespread rain opportunities likely going to be across the plains. In terms of the dry windows and drier than normal conditions, once again, probably across the eastern third of the country. Uh, that's generally been a theme. If you look at, at August, look at how things averaged out. The plains were a little bit more active, especially the Ohio Valley, much drier than normal throughout the month of August. And uh, really, I think we see a lot more of this as we go throughout the month of September. This is an area in general that probably continues to run drier than normal. Some rain chances in here in the short term for parts of Kentucky. They definitely need it. But as a whole, I think a lot of that region continues to run drier than normal. Now, what about temperatures? Do we have any summer-like weather coming back? We've been talking about another cold front around the midway point of the month. Data right now, just not seeing it. But I want to continue to emphasize that this upcoming front, data did not see. Data has been consistently too warm in the extended range at not seeing these cold fronts really beyond day 10. This is the current 10 to 15 day time frame. If we look back, this was the 10 to 15 day forecast from Friday. You can see it might be a little bit warmer on this latest run, but pretty similar in terms of the orientation. That is that same period now. Between the 8th and the 13th of the month, uh, the forecast on Friday was milder across the Ag Belt. Now it keeps the core of the warmth in western Canada, central Canada, into, into the far northern plains. And so data has just really, really struggled with these fronts. They have been too aggressive with warming the pattern up. And I really think it's the same situation in the 10 to 15 day time frame. Now, as I mentioned before, between our fronts, you know, 11th to the 15th of the month, 12th to the 16th or so, somewhere in there, I do think it's milder. I think that there can be a warm up, but I don't think data is seeing what could potentially be another strong cold front around the 15th, 16th of the month. Now, if you look at our Southern Oscillation Index, this has been one of the drivers that's favored the cooler air, the positive SOI here, tends to favor cooler air in September. We did briefly dip negative. So uh, again, maybe favor some of that, that brief warm up potential, but it didn't stay negative. It also dipped very, very weakly negative. You can see the correlation here. It does favor the warmer risks, but really, really skeptical that we see this show up in a big way by the end of the week two time frame, given the fact that it was so weak and, and that it didn't last very long. And so this is kind of what data looks like, but this being the predominant driver late week two for warmth, I'm skeptical of given the fact that it wasn't a big drop or a consistent drop negative below zero. The other aspect, if we take a look here, you look at the North Pacific and we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, the North Pacific, which has seen these cold fronts well, favors a pretty decent blast of cooler air around the 16th of the month. 
Now, again, is it as intense as these previous ones? I'm, I'm skeptical of that. Again, the SOI isn't as positive, which has reinforced some of the cooler air, but this at the very minimum favors another decent cold front around the 15th, 16th or so of this month. And again, I just don't think data is picking up on it right now. And, and to add more evidence to that, we do have a recurving tropical cyclone in the West Pacific. That tends to enhance the jet stream and favors a stronger cold front, which would be right around the 15th or so of the month. And on top of that, we're also looking at the potential for Gabrielle to form over the next seven days. And as it turns north in the Atlantic, that tends to pump up the high pressure over Greenland and force some cooler air down into the eastern third of the country. We saw that last month with Aaron as well. Aaron helped amplify the jet stream and really start the, the kickoff to, to shift this pattern. So with all that said, I think data is just too warm in the extended range. And I still think even though data is not seeing it, we need to watch for some kind of a stronger cold front around the 15th and 16th of the month. That's day 14, 15 or so. Watch out for cooler trends and model data around that time. Now, again, based off some of those other signals, I wouldn't be shocked if this one isn't quite as intense or quite as long lasting. And I still think that we could warm up the back third of August. But I think in this period, cooler trends likely, especially in this blue circled area, watch for a cooler roll forward in the forecast, which means lower CDVs than currently modeled. And yes, needing to monitor parts of the Ag Belt for maybe frost potential for the middle part of September, especially parts of the Great Lakes in the Midwest. We'll fine tune that as we get a little bit closer. Before we go, let's touch on the rest of September from a tropical perspective, seeing more signs for upward motion developing in the tropical Atlantic, also weaker wind shear, which favors more organized convection. Mid to late September, I do think that we can start to get more active, especially for the Caribbean and the Gulf in terms of tropical cyclone development. So certainly don't want to let our guard down if we're in the coastal areas, especially the Gulf Coast, perhaps the back half of September. And then finally, before we go, here's our little sneak peek at winter. Some key things that I'm noticing right now. Note how warm the Northwest or the Northeast Pacific has become recently. Still a negative PDO with this uh, warm blob kind of extending from the east coast of Asia all the way out towards the west coast of North America, but specifically have seen the northeast Pacific here south of Alaska trend warmer as of late. If we look at years that have had that, where we've had the warmth extend all the way across the Pacific, you have years like 2000, 2005, 2013, 2019, and 2022. Uh, the only year on here that was an El Nino was 2019, so I took that one out of the composite. But you can see September to, no to November matches up with our outlook pretty well. September being the cooler one, but averaging out maybe warmer to the north for fall as a whole, more seasonable to cooler south and southeast. How does that then roll forward into winter? Well, these years with that blob in the North Pacific tend to favor more of a negative EPO more of this ridge extending from the Pacific up into the Arctic, what we call a negative EPO, which allows for more blasts of colder air down into the U.S. If you watched our webinar last week, we talked about that right now, because of some of the high latitude blocking signals that we're seeing in, in Greenland, in the North Atlantic, still favoring some warmer temperatures south, but the risk this winter is colder because of this North Pacific signal. I, I still think, you know, and you look at years like 2001 and 2013, 14 on here, those were cold winters. And, and I do think that there is an increased potential for blocking in the North Pacific, which can allow for big blasts of cold air. Where I'm still a little skeptical heading into the winter is some of the, this high pressure that these analogs have over Greenland. Everything that I see right now tends to favor more of a positive NAO. So these analogs may still be a little bit too cold. But I think that this North Pacific signal will favor some pretty decent cold blasts, maybe some big storm systems as we go into the winter. Something I am monitoring very carefully as we get closer and closer to the winter season. Guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.